All right. Well, there's that. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name's Joel. I'm a teaching pastor here at the gathering. Um, and I woke up this morning and I took a shower, which that's, those, that's if I can do that every day, then it's going to be all right, you know? Well, yeah, the shower, we got a mirror near the shower, which is awesome, you know, every day to have to see this. And I am, can promise you from my experience this morning, I am still a man, 100%. Still a man. Been around these parts a while. And they're all still there. And then it hit me. We're doing a series on women. And then it really hit me that I have no idea what I'm talking about. None whatsoever. Which I know is really putting a lot of confidence in you, you know. But we're starting a series today uh, for May about what it is to be a godly woman, what it is to be a wise woman, what it is to be God's woman. And, um, and, and it's been, been heavy on me. I, I really don't know what it's like to be a woman at all. I, I experienced it this morning. I'm still a guy. So I was like, let's look at some scripture. So we chose Proverbs 31 to be our guide this month. And what is Proverbs all about? Well, we're going to learn about it this morning, but let me just sum it up in one word. Proverbs is all about wisdom. And then I got even more nervous because if there's two things I don't know about, it's women and wisdom. Not one, don't have any. So you're in trouble. All month long, you're in trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lean in on Scripture, which is what I always try to do because... It answers. I just talk about it a little bit. And I'm going to bring in some ringers this month. Paula is going to be a part of this series as well. Because though I am not a wise woman or a wise man, she makes up for that because she's a very wise woman. And so Paula is going to be a part of the series too. She's going to come and, and, and teach some of this as the series goes on as we journey through this together. And the end goal is, is for me maybe to get a little wiser by looking to wise women and maybe for you women to get a little bit wiser so you can influence those of us around you because wisdom is a path. It's a journey. And we want to look to kind of wise women, not only for our day-to-day -day life, but for who we are as a church, who we are as a gathering, where we're going, what we're about. And all of this Genesis, the Genesis of this all came together about seven months ago for me. And, you know, working here, serving at this church, you know, as you all know, I, I work full time in another job and I serve here, you know, primarily on Sunday mornings. This is the, the, the main role that I, I serve here. So I have these great ideas that pop up um, and I'm like, yes, that's what we're going to do. And I'll tell Paula and we'll kind of kick around ideas and get the artwork together. And I'm like, yes, got it, got it. And then it comes time to actually put it together. I'm like, I don't know what I'm talking about. But all of this came together. Um, about seven months ago, I was doing an army um, PT test, a, a, a physical fitness test, which uh, I am neither physical nor fit. So when they make us test on that, it never goes well because the army wants me to run fast. Now, let me say this. I like running. It may not look like I do, but I do. I enjoy running. I run, you know, three, four times a week, and I like it. It clears my head, but I like to run it my way. I want to run slow. And the army wants me to run fast because apparently when you're in the army and there ever comes a time for you to need to run fast, it's typically when you're getting shot at. So it makes sense. Run fast away from the people who are shooting at you. But I don't like to run fast, so I'm probably going to die. But they make us every year gather up and do these, these PT tests. And you got to do push-ups and sit-ups. And I always muddle through that and do enough just to get by. And then it comes time for the run. And Becky, my wife, can tell you that I play the big head game. And I get all worked up about it. And I'm not fast. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And she's like, yes, you can. You can do this. Because she's awesome and I'm not. And so she's like, Yo, you got this. You got this. So we go out to do the PT test. And I get to the back because... That's the best place for me, is in the back of a group of people running. Because if I'm at the front, then they all have to run past me, and they curse me, and then they feel bad because they've cursed their chaplain. Well, you know, so it doesn't really work out. So I always set up in the back, and I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to look for somebody, and I'm going to try to pace them. 
And I'm looking around and it's nothing but 18 year old guys in my group and 18 year old girls and they're super in shape and super fast. And my eyes landed on a woman. Her name's Captain Meredith Richardson, and she is an incredible officer, an incredible soldier. She's a, an incredible just person, woman, mother, all that. She's just great. And she is a good runner. And I'm like, if I can stay somewhere near Meredith, I'll be okay. I'll pass. And that was an awesome idea for about three steps into the two-mile run because that girl can fly. She took off. I'm like, why am I following her? And then it kept hitting me. I'm following her because she's good at this. Stay close to her. Stay on her path and you're going to be okay. I never caught her, nor will I ever, but I stayed near to her because she was running the right direction. She was running the right way. I say all that to say this. I want to be around wise people. I want to be around wise women. They make life better for me and I think for you here in this room, especially the guys here with me. We want to we take this series as a way to encourage the women here, the women who make this church so significant and so special and so powerful, to increase in your wisdom because you make us better. I want to follow where a lot of you are going because you're making wise choices. You're making God-honoring choices. And it hit me that day. I was like, in this world that says men have to be so strong and so powerful, we got to grow beards and we got to get guns and we got to shoot things and then we eat the things that we shoot. And then we say to the women, you eat the stuff that I shoot. They're like, that's what a man is. I'm sitting there going, you know what a man is? A man is saying that girl's good and I'm going to track in behind her some. I'm going to follow her for a little bit because what she's doing seems to be way better than what I could do on my own. We need each other. I need wise women here. I need wise women in my life. That's why 15 years ago, I made the only wise choice I've ever done in my life is I married my wife because she is a wise woman. And you know what makes her wise? Is right now she's getting red and shaking her head and getting mad at me and figuring out where I'm gonna sleep tonight because I'm making fun of her in my sermon. But that's what makes her wise is that she doesn't want that attention. But she is godly and she is smart and she is wise and she fears God. So I said, I want to click in with her. I want to know her. I want to be around her. I want her to be in my life every day until we die. That's what I want. I need wise women. And guys, you do too. We need wise women here at the gathering. We need wise women in our lives and we need wise women out in this world. Because what you bring to our lives, individually and collectively as a church, makes us better. I want to I wanna go where you're going. I want to I wanna experience what you're experiencing. So what this, this series is about is it's, it's for women. It's to, to build you up. But it's also so it can help build up the men that are a part of our church here and the men that are in your life. I want us to follow wise women here. I want us to find them. I want us to befriend them. I want us to listen and learn from them. And the way that I know that is because every woman in here right now is going, I could have told you a long time ago, Joel, that I'm wise. Why didn't you ask me? I would have told you. What I'm talking about here is wisdom. And wisdom in this world kind of gets, kind of gets diluted. Because we see people that are savvy, sharp, charming, and we're like, that's what I got to get near. And the world offers us models and examples all the time. This is what a wise person is, regardless of the gender. This, because look at how they look. And look at how they phrase things. And look at how they dress themselves. Clearly, that's it. And our world says, focus on them, or maybe even objectify them. That's what it's got to be. And God has a completely different standard. A standard that is laid out for us in Proverbs 31, which is where we're going to be all month. That's what we're going to study. We're going to see what God places out before us as wise, as beautiful, as gracious, as charming, as something worth seeing wanting to be like, wanting to be near, wanting to grow with. And why does God put that out there? 
It's because God is wise himself. God is a wise God. He gathers wise people together. He gathers them towards him. He wants to be around wise people. He gives them wisdom. And he gives them more wisdom. And he puts them before us as an example. So much so that that's what we're going to look all month long through that, this whole series. God is so serious about wisdom that James chapter 1 verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let them ask God. God who gives generously, it says. He's so serious about wisdom that he wants to give it to you. And he doesn't want to just give you a little. He wants to give generously to you. What's the catch? You got to ask. We have to ask. That's what it comes from. He is so passionate about this for women, for men, for older people, for younger people, for everyone in between, that when we looked at him and say, I need more of this, he's like, good, I've been waiting for you to ask. Here you go. That's how passionate he is about it. And why? Because he's wise himself. 212 times in scripture, the word wisdom is used. So it shows up a lot. I know there's a lot of words in the Bible, but 212 of them are about wisdom itself. There's a whole collection of books that are called the wisdom books, the wisdom collection, wisdom literature, Proverbs being one of them, Psalms, Job, Ecclesiastes, Lamentations, Song of Solomon, all laid in there as wisdom literature, wisdom books. Why? Because God is a wise God and he wants wise people. Ecclesiastes, which is the book that follows Proverbs, where we're going to be studying 29 times it uses the word wisdom. And it talks about how wisdom is so vital, so important, yet it can be tricky, it can be hard to get a hold of. In, 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 in Ecclesiastes uh, 8, 19, it says wisdom gives strength to the wise person. It gives strength to them. But in verse 23, just a few verses later, it says, I will be wise but it's very far from me. There's a trickiness there. There's a challenge to this. It makes wisdom something that we want, but sometimes it's hard to obtain. And all of us in here that have lived just a few days here on this earth, we know that. We get that. It's vital that we're on this search, and it's vital that we're looking to the right places. Because we may want wisdom, but it's very far from us. Well, how do we get nearer to it? We get nearer to it by understanding God's wisdom and wanting to be nearer to him. And then looking for wise people that he's giving wisdom to and wanting to draw near them as well, learn from them, grow with them. This search for wisdom is not just about today or this series or this month here at the gathering. This is our entire journey this is where we're going in life, trying to get wiser. Why? Because wisdom connects you to God. It connects us to God. That's a, a, a huge part of what wisdom is. It's what wisdom is all about, to connect you and I to God. That's why our mission statement here, we say we as the gathering, we are on a mission to connect people to God. Why? Because God's wise. We can learn from him. We can grow with him. We can understand him more and we can help other people find hope in understanding him more. So if we want to connect to God, if I want to connect to God, I want you to connect with God, we got to be trying to get wiser and looking to wise people and seeking wisdom from God and asking him who gives generously to give us more wisdom. Job, another wisdom book, says in verse Chapter 38, verse 36, it says, Who has put wisdom into the inward parts? Who has given understanding to the mind? God has, according to Job. God has, according to that wisdom literature. It's God who's done this. Because God is wise. And he's not just wise in how he created this world. He's not just wise in how he has provided salvation for us. God is wise, so wise, that he wants to give wisdom to you and I. To us. To the women here and to the men here. He's wise in giving out his wisdom. The way he has assembled you as a woman, the way he's assembled 
us as men, the way he has created us as people was done wisely, so wisely that he put wisdom into our DNA. Wisdom is not just something that you get when you pass eighth grade and then ninth grade you get a little bit more and then you go to college, you get, well, probably less and that's because of the partying. You know, and then you get your master and you're really wise because you're a master after all. Maybe some of you are doctors and, oh, well, I'm a doctor. I'm, I'm the epitome of wisdom. That's not, that, that is collecting knowledge. Wisdom is different. Wisdom is within us already. Because God is wise and he's created you and I. That's one thing we truly believe here at the gathering is that God has created people. He knit you together. And Job says he placed wisdom into the inward parts of you. He put knowledge in your mind. It's in your DNA, ladies. It's in your DNA, men. It's in our DNA that it's there. But you know what's also there? A desire for more to gain more wisdom, to grow in wisdom, to be able to share wisdom, to be able to impact the world with wisdom. He's placed it within, within us already and he's placing an, an innate desire to want more, to need more. And that's where Proverbs comes into play. But to study Proverbs 31, which is our goal today, in this month, but to get there, we've got to look at kind of Proverbs as a whole. So that's what we're going to try over the next few minutes. And to really get at that, I want you to look at Proverbs 1. Go to, to if you have a Bible with you, or it's in the worship guide, or we'll put it on the screen if you have a smartphone, a tablet, um, you know, a sand chart, whatever works for you to interact with Scripture, I want you to go there. Proverbs chapter 1. This is the first chapter in the book of Proverbs. We're going to be studying all month long the last chapter of Proverbs 31. But to, to see the bookends here of what God is after for women and for men, for all of us. Proverbs chapter 1 says this. Let me read starting in verse 2. It says, the goal of the book, that's what the writer is after here, is to know wisdom and instruction to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equality, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance. To understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. And verse four says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. God's created you with wisdom and God has created you to seek more wisdom. Why? Because it helps us know him better. It helps us know him completely. That's why verse seven, seven there says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. What makes a person wise? Well, they understand who God is. And we hear the fear of the Lord and we think like monsters under the bed or somebody chasing us down the street or having to give a, a public speech in our underwear, whatever it is, we think fear that way. But the idea of fear here is a beautiful thing. It's a freeing thing. It's an exciting thing. And that God understanding him is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of knowledge for women, for men, for all of us. This wisdom that we're after here is what the goal of Proverbs is. It's what the goal of this series is. It's what the goal of our life should be, to fear God, to understand him, to know him fully. To know that is wisdom. To have that is wisdom. A wisdom to fear God because he is wise and he gives it. But friends, he can also take it away. The word wisdom in the Hebrew, which is the original language of the Old Testament, the word wisdom is kokmah. And kokmah means wisdom. Hey, look how sharp I am at my Hebrew. But the, the word there means a little bit more than just wisdom. To really boil it down, kokmah means skills. So when wisdom is shown here, and it's shown again and again in those couple of verses we just read. It's used different ways. Prudence, guidance, insight, knowledge. All of that is that idea of wisdom. And wisdom is a skill. It's a skill that we can have. It's a skill that we can sharpen. It's a skill that we can hone and get stronger at. Wisdom 
as our life, as a skill, living it out, a skill of choosing right. Fearing the Lord is a pretty good choice. Understanding God is a really good choice, a skill of living right. Proverbs is not just about knowing God. It's about knowing how to deal with other people. So it's a living right skill, dealing with others. It's a skill of being right, of knowing ourselves, where we're strong, but definitely where we're weak and we can use sharpening, strengthening. Proverbs is about that for you and for me, whether you're a man, a woman, or a child, or anything in between. That's what the goal here is, is to connect with a wise God so we can fear him, so we can deal better with others, and so we can know ourselves and know those areas that we need to ask God for more wisdom in. Why? Because God is a wise God and God desires wise people. Like I said, so much so that he puts wisdom into your very DNA and he puts a heart that wants to seek and have more wisdom. It's why we're looking at wisdom books like Proverbs all month long so we can know what wisdom is and know what we're looking for and know what we're looking for in other people in their wisdom. This is our journey. This is for our journey together. While we're moving from chapter one all the way to chapter 31, why in our homework all month long, we're gonna be reading Proverbs every day, reading through the entire book together and on our own because wisdom is this journey that we're on because God wants that for you and for me. This is the journey for us. This is the journey for you as you move closer to God. That's why it says in verse seven, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of wisdom. He puts it there in front of us. But did you notice what comes after that in verse seven? It says the beginning, and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And then it says fools despise wisdom and instruction. There's a comparison there. There's a wise person who knows God, but there's a foolish person who clearly doesn't. They despise wisdom, in fact. They despise God, in fact. That's a big feature in the book of Proverbs. And for us to really understand Proverbs 31, to really study it together, we've got to kind of have an idea of what Proverbs is all about. And that's one of the features that's in this book, a feature that is comparative. That's a big part of Proverbs, the comparison nature of it. It shows here in the verse we just looked at. There's wise, and then there's fools. And what is wisdom? Knowing which one is the one to emulate, which one is the one to follow, which one is the one to listen to. Proverbs isn't going to answer every question for you. It's saying that when we have wisdom and we're seeking wisdom and we're looking for wisdom, you're going to start to put those choices together. Like in verse seven, am I going to listen to the wise person? Or to the fool? Am I going to listen to the one who fears God? Or am I going to listen to the one who despises God? There's a comparative nature to the book of Proverbs. And it's important for us to know it today so we can study it better next week. So we can study it better on our own. This comparative side. And when we start to make those choices that I'm going to listen to that person because they, they're wise. They understand God or they seem to want to understand him more. I'm going I'm to go where they're going. I'm going to follow their path. What that is, is a mark of wisdom. What it is, is a mark of maturity. What it is, is a mark of growth. What it is for you and for me is a mark of godliness. A mark of godliness. And that's what wisdom is all about. Knowing God and wanting to be more like him. Knowing God and wanting that to be a part of our life as we go throughout our day-to-day lives. Godliness is what wisdom is after here for you as women, for you as men, for all of us, for people of God. And that wisdom comes with understanding another feature in Proverbs, the context of things. Proverbs is not just comparative, it is contextual. And the context uh, uh, of Proverbs is God is wise, so we're going to listen to him. To really boil down what Proverbs is all about, and if I could kind of get simplistic, to boil down kind of what all of Scripture is, is that God is God, and you're not. God is God, and Joel's not. God is God, fill in the blank with your name, is not. 
That's what Proverbs is all about. That's what wisdom is. That's the fear of the Lord. It's not running from God and being scared of him. It's understanding that he's in the right place. And when I understand that more, it means I'm in the right place. It means you're in the right place. And we need women in this world who get that. Doggone it, we need men in this world who get that. And those who do, that's what we need to look for as good examples of what wise people are, wise women, wise men are. The context here is that God is worth knowing. He's worth fearing. He's worth worshiping. And the people who get that are wise because they want to be near wisdom. And God draws them to him and gives them more wisdom and places them before us as an example to emulate a person to seek answers from, to get counsel and insight from. And the way we do that is by living this out day to day. Working this out day to day. Why? Because wisdom is a skill. Remember, we just talked about that. It's a skill. And we're going to put ourselves near people who are honing that skill so we can sharpen that skill too. Proverbs is here to help us on our journey. Proverbs is here to help us on our journey to get closer to God, to have more wisdom, to sharpen our very lives. True wisdom in the context of Proverbs is a need to be closer to God, a need for more wisdom from him. And we're not talking simply about more education here, more life experience, being savvy financially being charming in relationships, more book learning. Though there's nothing wrong with those things, they are not the end goal, nor are they the beginning. The beginning and the end is God, and everything in between is God. And we want to connect to that. And in his love for you and I, he wants you there as well because he wants to connect with you. The Proverbs have that contextual sense that God is and we're not and wisdom is understanding that placement, understanding that authority, understanding his lordship, and understanding that he wants intimacy with you and with me. And he wants to put people in your life who show that as well. Another feature that I want you to understand when we look at Proverbs is this. It's not just uh, comparative. It is. It's not just contextual. It is. But there's a concreteness to Proverbs. Po Proverbs is, is, the Proverbs are concrete. Now, when I say that, it doesn't mean that the things we're going to learn here, like, that's it, that's my answer, because it's not all in there. That's why we have all of Scripture, and we have to filter it all through the gospel, because there's going to be a lot of things that you read in here on your own that it's going to talk about farming and tilling, and you're going to be like, oh, I guess I have to be a farmer now. That's not the concreteness that I'm looking for here. What I want you to understand when we read Proverbs is that a lot of times an example is put before you and it may be a man. And you're like, well, I don't have to listen to that example because I'm a woman. Or maybe an example like Proverbs 31 where it's a woman and you're like, no, I'm a guy. Don't have to listen to that. No, it's concrete in the sense that it gives a good example here. And wisdom is going, what can I glean from that? How, how can I take their example and use it to sharpen my own life? How do I look at what a dad does, even though I'm not a dad, and go, how can I make that so I can be a better son or relate to people differently? How do I look at what this farmer's doing and go, how do I apply that to work in my job and to my particular profession? There's going to be concrete examples like Proverbs 31. And it doesn't mean that you get to disregard it if you're not the same gender of that example, or you're not a dad, or you're not a mom, or you're single and it's talking about a married person. All of Proverbs is there to make us wiser, to make you wiser, to be able to look at that and go, how do I apply this to my own life? That's the beauty of this. It's concrete that it says, here's the example, but it's not so concrete that you can't glean from it, that you can't learn from it. Might be speaking to a dad and you're a mom. Well, let it challenge you as a mom. It might be speaking to, as a man and you're a woman. Well, let it speak to you as a woman. It might be speaking to a wife or a husband or an older person or a younger person. Let it challenge you where you are. All of these can be used to make you wiser. And wisdom is saying, I'm going to take that and allow that to sharpen me. I'm going to take that and allow that to help me connect with God better because wise people are godly people. And wisdom is a path towards godliness. That's what we're after. For the ladies here, 
for the men here, for those of you that are a bit more seasoned in life, that's code for old. For those of us who are younger and like me, because I'm totally young and hip, it's to sharpen us wherever you are, whatever place you are in life, Proverbs can speak to that regardless of the example that's given. And all of this, the context of Proverbs, the comparative nature of Proverbs, the concreteness of Proverbs, the goal of wisdom and understanding God, what this is after is conforming you and I, conforming us, because wisdom doesn't just connect you to God. Wisdom conforms you to godliness. It conforms you to be more like God and be able to take his hope to the world. A wise person is a godly person. And friends, that is what you need. That is what your family needs. That is what this church needs. That is what the world needs. That is what God desires of you, to be a godly person. And he believes in you so deeply. He loves you so much that he's ready to pour that out into you. He's ready to put people in your life who have wisdom, who understand God and are connecting with him. He wants to put them in your life because he desires that of you. Godly people, godly men, and yes, most definitely godly women, which is what we're after this month. Should be what we're after every month, being around godly women. Why? Because God doesn't just desire wise people, he desires wise women. So much so that of this book of wisdom, this book of Proverbs, almost an entire chapter is dedicated to wise women, godly women. He gives this powerful example in Proverbs 31. Let's look at it together. Go over to Proverbs chapter 31. If you've got a Bible with you or we've got the scripture in your, uh, your worship guide, we'll pop it up on the screen. And in the weeks ahead, we're really going to pick this apart, or at least that's our hope. Paula and I are going to teach this um, over the coming weeks together, and we're going to really kind of pick this apart to look at motherhood, to look at, um, at, at, at what it is to be a wife, to what it is to be a woman, that God is, is not only wanting to make you wise, not only wanting to make you wiser, but braver, bolder, stronger, that you're powerful in your relationships, you're powerful in your home, you're powerful in this very world. And it's not me and Paula making this up. We're looking at what Scripture says. Proverbs 31. Look at verse 10, where it says this. An excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. And some of you in here, all the single ladies, all right, you're with Beyonce today. All the single ladies are like, hold up, hold up, hold up. It just said wives. I'm not a wife. Remember, Proverbs is what? It's concrete. It's given a concrete example here, but that doesn't mean that a precious woman is only a wife. A precious woman is a single woman. A precious woman is a married woman. A precious woman is an older woman. A precious woman is a younger woman. You are precious. Why? Because God designed you as you. He loves wise women. He desires wise women. He wants wise women around him. and He wants wise women to go into this world. You're precious according to Proverbs 31.10. Whether you're a wife or not, whether your womb is fruitful or not, whether you've come from a beautiful engaged marriage or one that has fallen apart, you are still precious by the grace of God and his desire to make you wiser, stronger, and to show you off to the church, to the world. You're precious wives. You are precious mothers. You are precious women. And when we remember that concrete sense of Proverbs, we can see the beautiful example that's being laid out here. And he may talk about her being a wife. It's gonna talk about her being a mother. It's gonna talk about some of the things that she does. And in wisdom, ladies here, you're gonna start to say, how do I use that in my own life? How do I apply that to my context? And men, in wisdom, you're gonna go, how does that impact me? How do I seek more of that in my own life? How do I encourage and pray for my wife, my mother, my daughter, whoever it is? How do I pray for that? Single men, how am I looking for a Proverbs 31 woman? Single ladies, how do I become more of a Proverbs 31 woman? It's all working together 
Why? Because women are precious. But it's all working together because men, you're precious too. Every single one of us here is precious because God deeply believes in you, deeply loves you, deeply cares for you, and is deeply seeking to give you wisdom in this world. Because we all need it. And God is forming together here, men and women, people of God, who can not only impact their homes, but impact all of the relationships around them, all the places that they go. Understanding the context that God is God. He is great. And I want to be in order where he's God and I'm not. And understanding that there's comparison here where we can see there's places that I need to strengthen. Have I despised wisdom? Have I despised instruction? Have I been a fool? God, forgive me. Give me wisdom to see more of that in my life and to start to put that all together. It's the forming together, preparing us, preparing you ladies, preparing us men to be something beautiful, to be someone necessary, to be someone who's needed in our homes and needed in our worlds, to be someone godly. Because that's what this is all about. Godliness. How do we find more godliness? By wisdom. And that's a beautiful thing. It's beautiful by God's standards, not by the world's standards. What are the world's standards? Beauty, charm. What does God say about that? Let's look at the last verse in Proverbs. Kind of see the bookends, hopefully get a bit of the context here and be prepared better for next week. Look with me at verse 30 and 31. It says what? Charm is deceitful. It says what? And beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. A woman who is wise is to be praised. Verse 31, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. It says here that charm and beauty, they fade, they vanish, they're gone. And the world says, that's what you need to look for. God's like, no, 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 no. Wisdom, wisdom is what you're looking for. Wise women, wise wives, wise mothers, wise women to mentor you and inspire you, wise women to help you encourage and bring hope to this world. Because beauty vanishes, charm vanishes, wisdom remains. Wisdom remains remains, that fear of the Lord, understanding God, it is what remains. And according to Solomon, who wrote Proverbs, he says, this is what's to be praised. This is what God praises, and this is what we praise. So women, I praise you today. Thank you for being here. To, to certain women's room, thank you for pouring into my life. Thank you for pouring into the lives of people around you that you work with or live with or in your neighborhood. Thank you for pouring into, women, we praise you according to what Proverbs 31 says because of your wisdom, we're better. Individually and collectively, we are better. And we're going to try to understand you better. And we want you to understand yourselves better as we all search for more wisdom because that makes us better. It says, let her works praise her at the gates. Let her works. What are her works? Well, they're skills. What are skills? Wisdom. What does wisdom bring? Godliness. What do we need? Godly women. So that's what we're going to journey towards this month. Godly women here, so you can know God better and you can make him known better. Godly women here, so you can make us men stronger, wiser, and together we can know God and make him known. It's going to be a great journey a journey towards wisdom. I hope you'll keep joining me on it. And the wisest thing that I think we can do right now is to pray, to pray for this journey together. So you join me in prayer. Father, thank you. Thank you for the women in my life. And I hope I speak on behalf of so many people here as they thank you for women in their lives, wise, godly women. Two of the wisest and godliest that I know are here today with my family. Another wise and godly woman sitting on the other side, and Paula. 
I am so much better because of those three women pouring into my life. So many women here who pray for me, who encourage me. And I know, God, if they do it for someone like me, they do it into so many other lives. We have sons and daughters here who are stronger because of wise mothers. We have people that are at church today because of wise moms saying, come, be with me. We have moms here whose children aren't with them, but they have not stopped praying for them. In wisdom, God, they're reaching out to you because they know you can work miracles. Thank you for wise women that that make this church better, God. And thank you for wise, godly women who can make this world better. And I pray for us, God, as a church, that the women here can understand better who they are, how they've been designed by you. And we as men, we can understand and know better and pray for them more and help serve them more, God, so together we can make this church stronger. And more importantly, we can make this world more filled with hope, more filled with wisdom, understanding who God is and what he's up to. You've put us on a great journey this month, God. I thank you for your wisdom because otherwise I wouldn't be up to the task. And I pray for us, God, as we seek this more today and tomorrow and in the weeks ahead to know you, Father, and to make you known. Bless us on that journey, God, and bless us as a people and bless us as individuals. We thank you, God, in Jesus' name, amen. And amen. I'm so glad that you guys were here with me today. Thank you. Um, always such a blessing to get to do this. Um, I love this journey that we're on. And I love, even though I'm completely scared and overwhelmed by what we're studying, I am so glad to be doing this with you guys. Um, to prepare homework. I don't talk about homework a ton because it's in the worship guide. But I want to say this. This month, we're going to read Proverbs together because there's 31 Proverbs. We just saw that, right? We're talking about the last one. There's usually 30, 31 days, unless you're freaky like February and you want to have 28. But we can read one proverb a day. And that's what we're going to do. We've got a little catch up to do today, but you can do it. You can read a couple of chapters today. But what we're laying before you is a guide of reading one proverb every day. I have a dear friend who has been doing this for years and years and years. And you know what I often do to him as I go to him for counsel and insight. Why? Because he's wise, because he's been looking at wisdom books for that. And I'd love the same in my life, and I'd love the same for you. So that's your homework this week and in the weeks ahead is to read through Proverbs one day at a time, one chapter at a time, most, most days, but getting through that together and studying that together to see this full context that we just talked about and what it can mean for you and what it can mean for us as a church and what it can mean for the whole world. It's going to be a fun journey. I hope you'll join us back next week on Mother's Day where I also show you how completely unaware I am of talking about moms. Really, I'm going to leave that for Paula the week after, but we're still going to honor moms. We're still going to honor women. We're going to study together to become wiser people. All right, you got it? All right, good. Get out of here. Have a great week. See you later.